In this video, I will provide you an overview of electrothermal analysis in Keysight areas. If you look at Keysight's electrothermal solution, it's available both in Keysight ADS as well as in third-party simulators. So in ADS, we have a full closed-loop electrothermal analysis capability as well as Keysight offers heatwave which is integrated into third-party platforms such as Cadence Virtuoso and others. Here is an example of simulating a silicon 45 nanometer full custom IC where Keysight Heatwave and Cadence Virtuoso is used. The design consisted of 800,000 transistor which had 4.5 million heat generating elements which includes device and interconnects. And you can see Keysight Heatwave Simulator was able to simulate it very comfortably in a reasonable amount of time. And in terms of accuracy, it is only about 1 degree centigrade or lower as measured versus simulated comparison is drawn. So it not only has a high capacity, but a very accurate simulation technology which is available for designers working on high density IC designs such as VLSI, ASICs or RF mix signal ICs with power applications. In terms of ADS thermal simulation, the typical application include RF microwave IC packages and multi-technology assemblies. So as long as you have the design and its thermal technology files, you are able to now perform full electrothermal closed loop analysis natively inside ADS without having to rely on any third-party tools. Here is one example of gallium arsenide power amplifier which is analyzed by ADS electrothermal simulator. It's a three-stage power amplifier for WLAN application done with a wind process of HPT. Here you can see the circuit design and the thermal analysis. And also, it's important to note a temperature increase of only 10 degrees centigrade can cut lifetime in half. So it's a very important analysis which designer needs to perform to ensure the reliability of the product so that it covers the guaranteed lifespan and increases the product quality. Now, while performing electrothermal simulator or selecting electrothermal simulator for your application, it's very important to understand the importance of fine spatial resolution. Because if you are using a package scale simulation on your IC level design, it may miss the device level detail and underestimate the temperature as shown in the picture here. If you use a package based tool which has something like 20 micron resolution, it may seriously underestimate the temperature. Whereas if you use the right technology, which has much finer resolution, will be able to predict the proper thermal profile or the chip or the assembly which is simulating. And this is pretty analogous if you compare in the measurement world when you compare IR imaging with Raman thermography. And IR imaging being a little coarser measurement technique for resolution of about 7 micron compared to Raman which has 1 micron resolution. And you can see how IR imaging seriously underestimates the temperature profile of the chip. And here also what you can notice the comparison between Keysight 3D uh, simulator of electrothermal analysis versus Raman. And here you can see the measurement versus simulation data uh, is aligned pretty, pretty nicely. So it again a proof point of high accuracy offered by Keysight electrothermal analysis capability. Now to understand ADS electrothermal, which is basically a multi-physics simulator behind the scene and how it works, let me give you a quick illustration. On two sides of this chip, or the assembly which you are trying to simulate. On the left hand side you have a schematic that's where you, all your circuit components are placed. On the right hand side you have the chip layout or the assembly layout which also has thermal technology files which has all the thermal data uh, for the materials used in your design or actual fabrication. 
As a first step, designer perform a circuit simulation, which basically reads the initial temperature, which usually is an ambient temperature, but not guaranteed. It might be some other temperature which designer may need to keep. It solves the electrical equations and right power dissipation of all the components in the circuit design. This information is then passed to layout where thermal simulator uses it as a thermal source and then solve the thermal equations and calculate the temperature of all the components in the chip design and also accounting for thermal coupling between the elements based on the layout position. After thermal simulation, the temperature are passed back to circuit simulator which has components which are uh, temperature dependent and this temperature now is used instead of initial temperature on which the earlier response was calculated. Now this loop continues to operate till the powers and temperature between the components are self consistent. That means we have achieved a steady state performance and after that is done you can then look at the circuit performance and the impact of the temperature on your circuit performance and at the same time you can also open the thermal viewer and look at the thermal profile of your chip to notice the temperature rise in various layers how the thermal coupling is occurring and so on so this is a full closed loop simulation designer is totally transparent of all these actions being performed in the background here i provided these details just for your easier understanding now apart from full closed loop electrothermal simulation ADS also has a capability what we call as thermal floor planner in thermal floor planner you do not need a circuit diagram or a schematic design you can completely operate from layout place the components and based on thermal technology files the thermal simulation is performed so in a way you can call it as thermal only simulation whereby you will be able to see the thermal profile of the chip based on the power dissipation values which you provide for various devices placed at various locations in your layout. Here this snapshot gives you more clarity on that. So in thermal floor planner you have basically two use models. You could use it early in your design process to gain deeper insight into heat coupling and dissipation of various device layouts because you simply need to place devices at various location of your chip and specify what kind of power dissipation you think will be happening. Based on those power dissipation values, thermal analysis can be performed. The advantage of thermal flow planner is it runs very quick because you are not doing any circuit simulation or doing a closed loop simulation. So a lot of designers use it as to do the floor planning of their chip design, where to place power devices, how much gap to keep between power devices to avoid thermal coupling and so on. You can also run it later in the design process when you have a full design layout. It could be a little tedious for complicated designs, but it is surely possible. But better approach in full design layouts would be to run a full closed loop electrothermal analysis. The advantage again, just to re-illustrate the point, Thermal Floor Planner doesn't need any schematic or circuit simulation. You can completely operate on the layout level and simply input the device layouts, location and power dissipation. So that's all for this video. Hope this was helpful in giving you an overview of thermal um, technology inside Keysight ADS and how it can be helpful for you. Thanks for your attention and wish you all the best for your design work.